Hello everyone, Bonjour here, and welcome back to the Cabal Let's Play. Now you may notice on the screen that we have a new horde joining Engrim van Hasman in his quest for arcane knowledge. And this horde is led by a lord, which one of you guys submitted. Now I have to be honest, I'm a little disappointed that I was expecting a few more submissions. I would have liked to see what backstories and character choices you guys came up with. But the automatic winner by default, and I have to admit, I like the backstory as well, was the Lord submitted by Drake Immaterium. And so, I would like to introduce you to Vorpal Agrufax. Assuming I managed to say the name correctly. Now, this was the Chaos Sorcerer Lord of Metal, who had the Infernal Domination trait, which, if we just to remind you guys, gives every unit in the army plus five melee attack. And because it's been quite a while since I've used a Sorcerer Lord of Metal, it's going to be quite interesting to use him in battle. But not only has he got a custom name given by you guys, but he's also got his own backstory. Now I'm not going to go through it all word for word, but I've got it written up here. Now Vorpal Agrofax was actually known originally by Peter Bauman, and Germanic speakers will probably get the irony of that name. But he was a young and idealistic third son of a minor noble of Noel, who, growing up, had an affinity with metal. Now, he wasn't officially trained by the Colleges of Magic, so he didn't know about the Wind of Ma Metal itself, or Shaman, if I got the name right again, but he knew he could make metal do things. I mean, imagine from the comments that Drake left, a Warhammer Magneto. And so, growing up, he trained, he practiced with the, you know, affinity he had for metal, into his coming of age, where he decided for the ceremony that he was going to do a performance. He was going to get the silverware on the dining table to come up and dance to showcase his talent. Now, unfortunately, despite him practicing, things went awry, to say the least. One of the guests for the coming of age ceremony was a dwarf engineer with ties to the Bauman family. And, you know, magic and dwarfs don't go well together, do they? And so, when he tried to get the silverware to dance, first of all, it didn't work. And then, things went a bit bad. Eventually, it was going out of his control, we had swords vibrating in their sheaths. And if it wasn't for the fact that the dwarf engineer in question, luckily was the son of a runesmith and had a runic item, which allows you to damper the winds of magic, things would have gone bad. But realizing then that their son was responsible for this, he was then shipped off to the College of Magic in order to officially study the winds of metal. And that's where we left things off. So Drake, I'm looking forward to seeing what comes up next in Peter's story into becoming Vorpal Grufax. And I'm interested to see what tie he has to join in and Grim Van Hossman in his quest for arcane knowledge. But that's all going to be happening in the next episode, or the, the comment section of this episode, I should say. So check out there to see Vorpal's story develop from that point. But enough of me talking, let's get into the gameplay. Now Vorpal is going to have to spend some time to actually develop his uh, horde and grow up the army. And but in particular, this guy is a follower of Nurgle. So we want to make sure we get the Nurgle building as soon as we can. And because of my preference for Chaos Warriors, we're going to get the building for that as well. But he does start off with a couple already. We have the Nomadic Camp and the Tribal Relic that does give me some Warhounds in that. And once we actually get it leveled up, we can go for, I mean, let's be honest, Chaos Warhounds with Poison. Sounds like a pretty good idea for a Nurgle-themed warband, don't you think? And eventually, we can upgrade it to Sensors of Nurgle as well. Nurgle's Pestilent Glory. <laughs> Sounds pretty cool, doesn't it? So, that's the plan for the, this horde. But first, we need to get him to attack Grand. Now, how is your army looking now, Engrim? Your full strength. Just to help things out a little bit, I think I will move the demon, sp uh, the demon spew, maybe, over to this Nurgle-themed army of Vorpals. But for the moment, let's go after Grand. That's the plan, Engrim. That's the plan. Alright, Balance Bar puts it relatively in my favour, just to help things out a little bit. I'm going to bring Vulpo in, just so we can start getting some experience as well. Oh no, we can't do it yet. Bugger. In that case, can we build Siege Towers? We can. Might as well just make the battle a bit easier for us. 
and what research we want to do next. Now we don't have enough favor unfortunately to go for demonic pact. That's a shame because that would really help with the horde growth and casualty replenishment as well. But we have a few options. We've been working on erection of ruinous monuments. So let's have a look. Any of these? I mean, duels of the death could be quite handy. But I'm kind of tempted to go for things like this. A twisted, a thousand twisted blessings for chaos ones, plus five melee attack. Yeah, let's go for supernatural powers. 11 turns, but extra melee attack for chaos warriors going to be worth it. Right. Oh yeah, the other thing. Can't recruit a new hero yet. Oh, because we need the uh, building, don't we? If we want to get aspiring champions, we're going to have to go a particular route for that. Chaos. But, that's fine. We can manage that. 19... Oh yeah, okay. Otherwise, let's end the turn. Ooh. So, if anyone else would like to submit a Chaos Lord, of their choosing, whether, just make it clear whether or not a sorcerer lord or a general lord. And if you do want to have a particular brand of magic for the sorcerer lord, then make sure you mention it as well. But give me some characters, guys. We're not going to just stick with these two hordes. We're going to have some more. So if you're interested in seeing your own character leading a horde in this campaign, submit them, guys. Just let me know, like I said, the name, the character type, and what god you want them to follow. And we'll go from there. Now, this is quite interesting. Savage Blow. Ten turns, every army in the world has... Oh no, sorry, all factions, sorry. Yeah, all factions, everyone. Gets plus 20 charge bonus. Oh, that's going to be a pain in the ass to deal with. But luckily, we've got quite a bit of good characters. Right, let's get... I might as well just sort to resolve this one. So, let's go ahead. Yeah, that wasn't too bad at all, was it? Even in Vorpal here managed to kill 50 enemies. Well done you, you killed more than England. Just don't tell him that. Our right, let's go and burn it to the ground. Evil Lin. <laughs> what a name. Evil Lin. And Vorpal has now picked up Assault of Stone. So this is quite a good bombardment magic spell. And yeah, well done Vorpal. He also picked up the Mirror Guard. An ancient, no, a little bit. An ancient lineage, lineage of warriors supremely enhanced by the energies of chaos, nourished only by carnage and bloodshed. Hmm. I'm trying to remember. I know that Sigvold has a thing for making sure his warriors had mirrored shields, so he can admire his reflection in everyone's shield. But the fact that mirrors also kind of remind me of Zeech. So you know, I think we're going to. Oh, can we not do this? Oh, we have to do it this way. That's fine. Let's come over to here. Let's give you... I'm going to give you one of my best Chaos Warriors. There you go. You now have a bodyguard suitable for you. And as for you, we're going to give you the Mirror Guard. There we go. Recruits. I'm looking forward to seeing these guys in battle. Now... Could I also see about... Can we switch you down yet? Damn, we can't. Oh, it's because of this, most likely. Right, let's do some assignment of skill points. Right, would like... To try and do something about this. Chaos Lord, I still want to save her for the dragon, so I don't particularly want to go for this. But, ooh, Golden Eye of Zeech. This potent talisman consists of a filigree of witch hair, cradling the fossilized eye of a lord of change. It is said to give the bearer a sixth sense that warns him of threats from afar. Now, that's quite a few nice campaign bonuses. But also increases damage resistance, forest spotting, and visibility range. That means we can basically see, if we're on a high enough position, see across the map. That's going to be cool. Well done, we can now pick that up. Now, what else are we going to try and get? Picked up Arcane Conduits. Voices of the Guard Dog. God, the Guard Dogs? Really? <laughs> right. Let's not do that. that. That's the attrition. That's going to be handy eventually. Gavin and Mites. Having the ability to be able to produce more units would be quite handy too. But I'm going to start. Let's have a quick look here again. Because we would like to go for this eventually. 
extra starting amount of magic, extra chaos lords, that would be handy. Now, let's go for the dominating presence for him. That way then we can start working on improving our army's combat abilities. But there we go, talisman has been gained. Let's just double check, you're switching it over, you are. Okay, still, anything we can give over. Helm of many eyes? Nah, we're gonna let you keep there. Okay, in fact, let's pop over to Vorpal a moment. Just to see if there's any of these we can give. Uh, Scarecrow Banner, we can give you that, sure. Chaos Corruption, Cultist, you know what? These are our followers, I think. You're gonna have to earn your own, I'm afraid, Vorpal. Right, what's this, by the way? Oh! Do you realize we picked this one up? So the Cunning of Zeech is a new right. Followers of Zeech are blessed with the deep wisdom and cunning of Zeech himself. In battle, they can confuse enemy plans and foil their attacks. The opposing generals are like puppets in a play staged by Ingram, which gives us plus 20% campaign movement range. Everyone can have vanguard deployments, and we can get lightning strikes. That's a powerful ability, and it lasts for 10 turns. You know what? Um, I'm not going to do it yet, because we don't really need to, but it would be quite a useful ability. In particular... Can we use it in sieges? I mean, the ability to be able to actually go after, you know, deploy right up close to a wall before you actually have to attack can be very instrumental when it comes to trying to avoid missile fire. Now, admittedly, we still have to rely on ladders if we want to get our troops up on the wall, but having everyone been able to get right up close to those walls and take less fire, very useful thing to have, I must say. Now, Ashrak. That's going to be our next goal. I do still feel tempted though to check out Nagarond while they're still here, but we do want to build up both hordes, so I am going to take the long way around. So I don't know if we're going to go necessarily all the way around to here or not. We might do. We'll see. But for the meantime, we can at least head up towards Ashrak and head over and towards the Grand End. We can always then push down and into those. So. This time round, we need... Alright, we can't do much, I'm afraid, but we can give, try and give you a few extra units, at least. So let's go 51%. And switch over into encampments. Uh, we can't do anything here about upgrading, because we don't have the population, but we can at least recruit a few units. So, recruits. I'd say... Two of... No, let's get more orders, for the moment. There we go. Alright, eight colts. Let's upgrade level you up. Again, we'd like to get a manticore instead of a bardic chaos steed, so I'm just going to leave her for now. But what magic can we give you? Let's give you magical reserves and earthen. Let's get rid of that miscast chance. I think we're still suffering from that at the moment, aren't we? No, I, must, I think that's my other playthrough. You know what? I can't remember. Right, let's have you. Facts. Let's have you help out a bit. Let's move you as well. 51... Fact. Come out, come out and join up with him first. Right. Let's shuffle over a few units, because we can always recruit new ones. So let's help out by giving you these... I think we can get three recruited, so let's just go all three. In fact, let's give you that and the Daemon Spew. Very thematic for a Nurgle force, don't you think? Oh, no. Right, so we'll give you that. We'll push forward then so we have 50% again. Come on. 45, 47. Come on. You know what? We might as well just stick you right here, to be honest. Now. There we go. Right, so now... Okay, we can only get two units, but we can get Warriors of Zeech. Oh, hello. Hang on, let me just compare, right? Chaos Warriors. Chaos Warriors of Siege. Wow. Okay, that's... Come on, stop moving around. Game. Right. Hate it when the menu does that. It just is annoying. Right. Oh yeah, let's upgrade Warband of Chaos as well. Right, come on here. And let's check out these new units. 
So what we have Siege, and here they are here, right? So. Chaos Warriors have better melee attack and defense, but the charge bonus is not as good. Their armor isn't as good, or neither is their leadership. Ugh. I don't know. I mean, what about the other... I mean, we still got these cultists to try out. So that would be interesting. Um, Let's try them out at the very least. Right. Although, can we get any more... Damn. I was hoping we could. No matter. Ah. Here's the thing. This mod that gives me access to these warriors is not compatible, it seems, with close the, uh, close to the table, not close to the tabletop, but the whole one I'm talking about. It's not uh, compatible, it seems, with the tabletop caps, you know, which gives us a, it's a core unit. So in theory, we could have an entire army of warriors of Zeech, uh, or, you know, and things like that. That is something we're going to have to try and balance a bit. But for the moment, to try them out, let's get two warriors here. There we go. Oh no, actually, let's get one. Um, what's the one we got here? Halberds. Let's try out warriors each with halberds as well. There we go. That should that should work. Right. End the turn. After we got all of that done, at least we're now taking the opportunity to try and build up Vorpal's army as well as Engrim's. I mean. As we can always try and describe it, shall we say, as, you know, a lot of the source, you know, the um, Chaos Warriors are either undivided, or maybe those that, despite following Engrim, f have that core in their hearts for that great fatherly figure that is Nurgle, the God of Pestilence. Maybe they want to join in, who knows. But there we go, Chaos Mortars now joined in. Something actually occurred to me when I was going through things, and it's a shame though, with the benefit of hindsight, we didn't incorporate it. There's actually the Chaos Unleashed, no, sorry, Ultimate Chaos mod, because that is something I wanted to try out. We'll be able to, if we did that, we could have had daemons, we could have had unique champions for each of the gods, we could give our characters marks of chaos. It's a shame that I didn't think about it at the time. I have it saved as a favorite mod in my, the Steam Workshop. Just forgot all about it when I was came in to do this. So maybe for a future Let's Play, maybe we can do something about that. But for now, let's get Vorpal, in fact, to head over towards Ashvag. I know he's not going to be able to take it out with the army. Apparently he's got a decent chance of taking it out with the army he's got. Wow. I uh, didn't expect that, but let's bring in Engrim just to help out a little bit, okay? We're not going to go all the way. Let's go 49-52, because then I can take the opportunity to actually upgrade his thing as well. So if we do that, and have you come in to attack? Yeah, we win. Nice and easy. That's... Uh, I do feel tempted for that, but you know what? We not We're not going to go for just raise. We're going to get our money, because we need it. Score shielding. Handy. We shall weave the right. Let's give you Vorpal, Roots Marcher, and Tribes of Chaos. Don't worry, I'm going to give him his magic as well, eventually. But for now, I just want to make it so he has a bit of extra growth, so we can get the, his buildings built up a bit more faster. And as for you, Engrim, we can upgrade either this to your Proving Grounds. To be honest, though, we don't really need to, shall we say? I mean, Water Horse Masters would be nice as a replacement for the cavalry we currently got. But we don't need Hell Riders and we don't need Sensors, so we may leave it for the moment. And let's upgrade this. Anything new uh, adds to? No, it just adds the same stuff, but more campaign movement, Chosen of Zeech as well. Warders of the Raven Host, and we can get our unique Lord Magisters. Hang on. Oh no, I'm getting mixed up. My bad. There's actually a guy up here, I think, we can get 
who's supposed to be like a unique lord. Chaos Dra- we can get a Chaos Dragon. Oh shit, right. That's something for me to remember. Okay, let's grab that and upgrade it. You can actually fill up now with your last slot. In fact, do we want to do that? Or do I want to wait to see what new ones we can unleash? In fact, let's get rid of you a minute. I'm just interested to see what some of these cultists would look like. So, for example, cultist warrior. I'll tell you what, let's take chaos the cultist warriors for a moment, right? And compare them to... Okay, spearmen not as good. Melee attack and defense... Uh... You know what, let's just try cultist warriors. I just want to see what they're going to look like on the campaign map. So, let's just do that. Oh, we need another one as well. Let's keep that open. Yeah. Let's just keep that open. Let us corrupt. Right. Because that way then, it gives me the opportunity to try and out some of these new cult uh, units we can get from upgrading the cult of Zeech. But yeah, like I said, it's a real shame that I didn't use the ultimate chaos. I remember looking at it thinking that would have been fantastic and I actually thought about doing a narrative let's play with it at some point because I was going to have so we can have different lords on the Mortal Empires map just trying to do their own thing. Like we'd start off with a character perhaps that, I don't know, may have felt um, he was supposed to be the chosen one of, you know, to unite all the Chaos Warbands together, the Ever Chosen instead of Archon. So we could have chose, started off with Archon as sort of the faction and then just swapped him over for a generic character which I would name for myself but then to have at least a follower then of your warlord host for each of the chaos gods and have them explore the map go after Ulfran the dark elves I think that would have been quite an interesting game to have seen because then we would have had these chaos lords with their own sort of plans and goals and stuff like that I think it would have been quite cool but, something for perhaps a future playthrough. For the moment, I just want to double check how much do we need? Eight. Eight magic, okay. Eight population surplus in here. Okay, and as for you, do we. How many do we need to upgrade? Four. And we need to upgrade it to tier two anyway. Okay, in that case. Let's move you up a little bit more. Alright, 50%? I'm going to double check this while I remember. Okay, 25%. Right, that sounds better. There we go. At least we'll be able to move around in a lot further as a result. Right, let's say 33 for you. And we don't need to upgrade Engrim's buildings in particular, but I'm just going to check. Because with the... Oh. Never mind, cancel that. Because with the new mass, what we found was that... Hang on, let me just double check. Okay, we shouldn't have any infighting now either, which is good. But yeah, an issue we had with new mass is that because of all the bonuses you get for like having certain buildings in the province, which means then that they get extra bonuses, it was hard to actually judge how much you need to move but in order to still take advantage of encampment or something like that. Because every time we were trying to move, it was just, um, it wasn't taken into account, basically. It was just making it so, you know, you may move, so you had 50% and then it didn't work because technically you've only, you've moved 40% or something like that. Um, Secrets of the Raven, let's start working on these a bit. Chaos Corruption, let's give you the change of ways. I know, actually, no, cancel that. Let's pick one of these. Most income, faster magic. Let's give Secrets of the Raven Guard and Blessed by Chaos. So we get that Chaos Warriors um, boost going. There we go. Vorpax, we're going to upgrade this because we need to do that. And double checking. No, there isn't. Damn. 
I was just hoping that there might have been an option for us to be able to try and um, get a ritual that increases horde growth. But apparently that's not going to be the case. But that's fine. There's no worries. What we're doing then is we'll have Vorpal and lead and most of the battles for the moment. Have Engrim come in as reinforcements. And then that way then we can take advantage and make sure we get his growth going up a bit more. And of course as he levels up we'll continue to give him some of the magic but also the horde growth mechanic. So he can at least get his army built up a bit faster. Alright. So like now he's already got one so we could upgrade this. I do feel tempted to do that, but I'd rather hold on so we can start getting the Cult of Nurgle here. That gives plus three pop horde growth as well. That's good. We got Plague Bursts. Oh, wow. If the Plague Burst is what I think it is, that's going to be fun to try out. You guys know the bloated corpses from... Hang on. Who's leading this? Nagorond. Oof. Well. Well, we're going to have to fight them at some point. So, let's just continue marching into his territory. Until it's ready for us to deal with. Alright. Let's continue. Alright, in fact, you get level 3. So, let's give you now Seer and Doom. And an extra level of Horde Growth. There we go, plus 13. It means it takes two turns now just to get him up to the next one. Right. Again, a nice, quick, easy end turn. Ooh. Now, as I also mentioned. Oh. Before a sorcerer blessed fights in himself, make your case. You've declared war on me. That's fine. That's absolutely fine. Alright, I can already spot he's got a character down here, a hero. That's okay. Is it worth me sending a cold off to try and deal with him? I could give him a chance to level up at least. Let's get that impact into my turn and we'll see if it's worth it in terms of the chances. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I was about to say, get hold of his. Thanks. Uh, what's this? A recent clutch of reports regarding ill discipline in the lower ranks is cause for concern. Clearly, clods are being hired. Okay, sure. Right. So, as a result, we now have to pay more for our recruitment, but everyone starts off with higher levels of experience for three turns. I think we can make this work. Uh, can we attack this one turn? We cannot. Okay. Let's move you 50%. Alright, Yandis. <laughs> right. I think we need to give you a few more units. Let me just double check. Can't give you any of those uh, Chaos Warriors yet. Let's have Engrim provide a few more units. Right. Let's give you let's give you another unit of Chaos Warriors, I think. Yeah. That would be just fine. Okay. Alright, so at least you're gonna have that yourself sorted out there. In fact, Vorpal, you can move twenty five but I keep forgetting it's twenty five, not fifty. So you can move a little bit closer and get into position here. Likewise, Engrim, you might as well move up now to support. No, there. Alright. There we go. Okay. Still got a little while to go before we can do anything with that, but... How much do we need? Again, eight. Before we can get our next building. Gotcha. Alright. Oh yeah, it's Anguin that I want to start recruiting for. Because now, we've got Chosen of Zeech with great weapons. We can try out... This could be fun. Chosen of Halberds, let's actually get disband you for the moment. Because now we can get three units. Might as well just go big, eh? So let's get a unit of ones with Halberds. Chosen of... Oh no, that's... Hang on, that's great weapons. Not Halberds, I can't read, apparently. 
Let's go for that one. Fine, let me just compare them to these guys. I mean, don't forget, these guys are also good at unit level 7. Uh, these guys got a lot more health. That's... Jesus, that's a lot of health. I had no idea. Wow. Um, okay. <laughs> well, hey, that's good to know. That's good to know. I'm guessing there's some incompatibility for some of the mods. Okay, that's good to know. Uh, and if I keep saying good to know, I'm sure that makes means something. Magisters. When the armies of Chaos sweep down from the north, cultists often break their secrecy and join up with them. Wearing masks of a herd, very strong fighters, blah blah blah. Let's try you out. Alright, and... Done. Okay, we've now reached the 31 minute mark. So it's really the end of today's episode, but I'm going to just do a little bit more. I just want to get rid of the Grax end with Vorpal, so again, we can level him up a bit. And continue on his journey then to try and get up to get in the Cult of Nurgle. He may need to get his hand on some of the other buildings as well, though. That's going to be a thing, isn't it? In theory... In theory... Do we need... Like, if I... I'm going to test something out, right? In fact, let's test it out with... No, let's not do it with you. Let's do it with you, of course. In theory... Like, getting the senses of Nurgle here could be quite interesting, don't get me wrong. But I'm just wondering, like, if we knocked this one down, would that mean that the next building only needs two population surplus rather than four? I wonder, it's just, I'm curious. Because having the ability to get this much more quickly is going to be more useful, and I'd rather than having the, um, you know, hounds in that, I'd rather have warbands, you know, chaos warriors. Let's... No, let's not... I won't risk it yet. Thing, because at least we're getting some troops. Let's go have you now go and attack at the Grark's end. Okay, you can do this yourself. That's fine, we'll just leave you to it. We can awaken the tribe. Do we want Mung to return? Or do I rather... Let's just raise it to the ground for the moment. So we get the extra Horde Grove. Because what I was curious about, Bear Isle is them. What I'm going to do when we get to Bear Isle is that is where I'm going to actually bring Mung back. Because otherwise having them have so the capital is like a s small minor settlement is not going to be as useful. So we're yep. definitely going to encourage that. Let's give you now, shift, uh, get this so we can f get that final bit done. And then what magic we're going to give. Having the ability to give extra armor piercing damage and weapon damage to all units in the in the map, extremely good. Gehenna's Golden Hounds, I just love the spell, I think it's really cool. Glittering Robes, for making it so we have extra armor for everyone. Nah, let's go Plague of Rust. Does it actually have area of effect? No, it just applies to one enemy. Right. That includes everyone. Okay, let's go for that then. There we go. Alright. And do we want to level this up? No, we're going to continue building up so we can get the uh, our next building available. Alright. So, with Dargrax End burnt down, it's now the end of today's episode. So, what's going to happen next? Oh! Interesting. Now, I don't know necessarily if we're going to be up for fighting this battle just yet. Because Witch Elves are quite deadly. Don't get me wrong. Let's retreat for the moment. There we go. We can now take advantage and just go after them ourselves. But anyway, this is going to be the end of today's episode. So what's going to happen next time? Well... We're going to continue heading along to the west, on top of the map, so we can go after Iron Frost, make our way towards the Bear Island, so we can reawaken Mung, 
Head back down south now and start coming back into Nagalons from the west. So that way then we can have plenty of opportunities to build up both Vorpal and Engrim's uh, hordes. If you guys want to submit a lord so they could appear in a future episode, let me know and I'll keep notes of all of them so we can keep it in mind for future ones. But that's the end of today's episode. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you all enjoyed and I hope you join me next time for more Warhammer. But until then everyone, take care and goodbye for now.